Hey guys, how's it going? Today I've got a fun little video here on my Motorola Moto E and I'm going to show you today how to install SciGen Mod 11 on your Motorola Moto E. Yes, that's correct. SciGen Mod 11 is released for this device, which is really, really cool. It is an unofficial build at this point, but um, I'm sure it'll become official, supported by SciGen Mod very, very soon, considering this is looking like it's running really, really smooth. So, that being said, let's go ahead and just jump into some prerequisites for this. Um, you are going to have to have an unlocked bootloader on your device. You're going to have to have uh, custom recovery installed. I prefer Torque Recovery, so I would recommend having that. Um, and then I'd also recommend having an external SD card. You don't have to technically, but it'd be highly recommended. So here you go. You're going to download the CM11 right there. And right there is the Google Applications KitKat. And you're going to need those as well. Everything will be linked in the video description down below, as always. All right, so besides that, custom recovery um, and unlock bootloader and the files you need, boom, 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 all four of those things met, you are uh, good to go. So we're going to go ahead and reboot into recovery with this application. It's called Quick Boot. I like using it. It's very, very nice. There you can see the um, unlock bootloader warning standard once you unlock your boot bootloader. Now, if you don't have an unlock bootloader, you don't have root access, you don't have custom recovery, don't worry, if you have a Moto E, I have the videos on how to do that for you. Um, they're on my playlist on rootjunkie.com or on um, YouTube, obviously. Either of those places, you can find all that information. There's even links on XDA as well. Um, so, let's go ahead and show you this. So here you go, this is the Team Win Recovery Project booting up there. So first thing you want to do before you flash any Android backups, and also why you want to have an external SD card, is go to Backups. Select everything right there. Here I would tell it to back up to uh, external storage because once you do one backup to your internal storage, it's so small it'll pretty much take up all your internal phone storage and that's kind of sucks. You know, hit OK, swipe across and create your first Android backup. Now, I'm not actually going to do that in this video just because I've already done one and it takes a while so I have a backup right there. So if I have any issues I can always restore right to that. Once you've done that, go to Wipes and just swipe across and this is going to wipe data, um, cache and Delvic that gives you a clean slate to install your ROM you can go back, back again, go to installs and this actually is already in my external SD card so both my things are uh, listed right there so I'm going to click on CM11 and I'm going to add a zip I'm going to click on the KitKat gaps, everything's listed good two files of 10 max and go ahead and swipe across to uh, flash CM11 to my device. So this uh, install is not going to take too long. It should go pretty smoothly because I don't think these files are all that big. I think you maybe are looking at um, less than half a gig in size for everything there. And it should go all smooth. As soon as it's done, we'll come right back to it and I'll show you the rest of this. Alright, so it looks like your uh, ROM flashed. It took about two minutes to flash the ROM. And that is done and it looks like it's doing the uh, Google applications at this point so just be patient this is a little bit longer than some of these flagship devices just because I mean this thing's got a dual core processor I think in it in the Moto E a lot of the flagships are you know quad cores and like clock twice the speed as this thing so it is gonna take a little bit longer to flash uh, but there you go it is done total flash time was about three minutes so not too bad um, from here just go ahead and hit uh, reboot system and now, first boot up, I always tell everybody, on first boot up, give your device 10 minutes, okay? Especially, like I said, this is a dual core device, so you want to give your device good, solid 10 minutes on first boot to get a full initial boot up. There's your Sajamon boot animation, which is really cool. That's always exciting to see. Um, and first boot up will take that 10 minutes up to that 10 minutes. It probably will boot in like 5 or 6, but it could take all the way up to 10. So as soon as this gets through the boot animation and this break, I'll come back to it. But just be aware of that. If you don't have um, a device that boots in or it boot loops after 10 minutes and it's never booting up, you need to get back into custom recovery. And once you get into custom recovery, restore your Android backup. Okay? You can get into custom recovery um, with your button combination, powering the device off, and then using your, I think it's volume, I don't know, I think it's volume up and power, or maybe it's volume up and down and power and it'll get you to bootloader mode and then from there you can go ahead and select recovery and get right back into Team One Recovery Project or Torp Recovery. Then you can restore your Android backup and you're back and running. 
Worst case scenario, I do have a restore utility out there that you can just hook up to your computer and run a restore script and it'll totally restore your device back to stock. You'll still have an unlocked bootloader, but you'll have that stock restore. All right, so there you go. Let's um, just let this thing boot up. All right, well that actually booted up quite quickly right after I done finished talking there, so that's kind of funny. Um, go ahead and hit next. And uh, we'll go ahead and hook up our Wi-Fi to this thing. All right, we're connected. I'm gonna skip my Google Play account. Um, you need to refer the SIM card instructions. Okay, so I don't have a SIM in it right now, so it came up with that. I'm gonna skip my Sygen mod stuff here. Wi-Fi mobile network allow. That's fine. All right, now well, that looks good. Central time zone all looks okay. And let's go ahead and hit finish. Unfortunately, side of my account has stopped. I'm not really worried about that. And let's see what we get here. All right, I guess quick word to the wise here, guys. Um, two things, or maybe one thing that's really important. I just got this to boot. I had that black screen because I s installed too old of a version of the KitKat Google applications. I guess you need to get the newest one linked in the video, uh, the XDA post. And because I didn't do that, my launcher wouldn't launch. Everything was kind of going in real whack out. So uh, definitely make sure you get the newest version of KitKat Google applications and you install those. Otherwise, you're going to have all kinds of headaches with getting this thing to boot up correctly. Um, that being said, it is taken care of now. And that is the problem I had. Not a huge deal. I got my stuff uh, updating as well. But let's go ahead and show you Saijin Mod. Um, obviously, here I got one screen. If you want to add something to another screen, you just drag it to another screen. And now you got a couple screens to scroll from. Um, I don't know, you guys have probably all seen Saijin Mod. I mean, this is like the biggest custom ROM there is out there, basically. You got a terminal emulator and just your standard Google applications. It's very nice. The cool customization about CM is pretty much in settings here. And right here, it's under personalization. So you have your lock screen, your theming, your status bar, and your notifications stuff. Uh, if you get into this, this is what you're going to want to mess with. Also, you can see Super User is built in right there. We'll go into About Phone really quick. Here's your Moto E, Android version 4.4.4, .4 and your build number, and so on. If you could click on the Android version, you have the K. You have the uh, KitKat Easter Egg right there. So, very, very nice. I'm, I'm definitely digging it. It does. It is a very nice setup. Um, it's very fun to get Saijin Mod 11 on the Moto E even though it can be a real headache, but just make sure you install the right Google applications and you'll be good to go. Uh, rookie mistake there for me, I guess you could say. Another thing I always like to do with uh, CM11 is come in here and go into settings, go to about phone, go to um, the build number, and just keep tapping on it. There you go. And it enables developer options and performance. So now you can do some tweaking with your CPU under performance and developer options. I like to come in here and I do advanced reboot menu and turn that on. And let's see if that does function. You should, you should be able to come in here and do reboot. And then now you can reboot directly to recovery or bootloader and reboot. Um, so I always like to turn those two things on as well, along with all the other fun customization. I also like to get my battery percentage up here in the notification bar. Obviously, you can do a pull down and see it right there as well, but those are the things that I definitely always tweak when I have Saijamod installed. Um, there you go, guys. That's going to be it. That's going to be how to install Saijamod 11 on your Moto E. I uh, hope you guys like this video. Uh, link everything in the video description down below, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Root Junkie out. Yeah.